Hello all my Hello Maniacs out there. Welcome back to the channel. It's so great to see you again. Now I had an idea. A lot of people asked if I came up with my own voices and I do. The reason why I've never put on a video before is because I don't really think people want to see that. You know, I really think people just want to see impressions, but I was like, well, how could I incorporate new voices into a video? And I was like, well, one thing a lot of people don't know about me is that I also do cartoons. I'm a bit of a cartoonist. And I was actually planning on being an animator long before I became a voice actor. I would draw all the, all the time in class. I was drawing since I was like two years old and I love it. I'm not professionally trained, but I'm competent. So I thought I'd come up with a fun challenge where I have to draw new characters and then come up with voices for them. Uh, in the same video. So that's what we're gonna try out today. Uh, but before we get started with the video, just wanted to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Mickey Travels. If you wanna book a Disney vacation, then go book it with Mickey Travels. They can get you the best vacation for the best price. So thank you, Mickey Travels. All right, so I'm gonna draw the characters on my iPad using my Apple Pen, uh, using the app Procreate. I love that app so much. You definitely feel like you're creating the pro way. I think that's really, uh, really a great app for that. And uh, I asked my friends before I got started what I should draw just to make it even more of a challenge And one of the things that was requested of me was to draw a jerk giraffe So we're gonna go through that one real quick So with the giraffe I really wanted to make him feel like he was staring you down as you're looking at him So I tried to do him at an angle to where his head is coming down at you His body would look a little small compared to the rest of his head But that's because the head is coming closer to you. It's supposed to give that illusion of perspective uh, coming at you uh, and I think it translated pretty well and another thing I was surprised by I don't normally draw giraffes or some of the lighter built animals Usually I deal with dinosaurs and rhinos and elephants and stuff So uh, usually I deal with very heavy emotions and very heavy movements and stuff So it, it was a bit of a challenge with the giraffe, but I was surprised by how well uh, the heavy eyebrows translated and everything else and uh, Yeah, I was really happy with the way he turned out I'm still not 100% sold on the shading that I did. Uh, it just ended up feeling kind of weird to me, but that's just because the way I do shading just was a little difficult with the spots and having spots roughly the same color as the rest of them. But yeah, here's my jerk giraffe. All right, and there we go. Our jerk giraffe is complete. Um, so I gotta think of a good voice for you. So. I'm thinking he's gonna have a higher pitched voice even though he's a jerk and still kind of there because giraffes tend to be a little more, I guess, fragile is the word I do it. They're, they seem more dainty than like say a rhino or an elephant or a hippo or something. So I'll give him a higher pitched voice, but still pretty gruff. Like, you know, he means business, but at the same time, he's still a giraffe. You know, you can't really take him too, too seriously. So. I figure he talks something like this. Hey, what are you doing on my side of Savannah? Huh? Next time you come over here, you're gonna get a hoof to the face. So I suggest you back up right now and get out of here. <laughs> yeah, think twice before you mess with me. Yeah, I figured it'd be something like that. <laughs> so next up, another friend asked me to do an anxious capybara. So I was like, huh? Let's do that, an anxious capybara. So this was my first time ever drawing a capybara, so that was interesting. <laughs> but I really wanted to capture their rodent-like qualities, but also the uniqueness of a capybara. Like, they have this really weird rectangular kind of head. So I really wanted to keep that aspect, but also add some familiar rodent aspects that you don't normally see too heavy on a capybara, but something that would just make something familiar to the audience. So I gave him the kind of rat cheeks and the squirrel uh, the, I'm sorry, the rat teeth and the squirrel cheeks. Uh, so I think that really helped things along. And also I really worked hard to try to figure out a good stance to make him look anxious and fearful and everything else. Uh, so, and also I had him afraid of a butterfly because I think that's just hysterical. I, I, I don't know why, I think it's funny. And I also really wanted to do stuff with his eyes. So as you can see that they, uh, I call it the veggie tail eyes where one eye is huge and the other eye is really little. And I put a little accent marks around him to show that, you know, he's really fearful. He's just got this whole other uh, dimension about it. So yeah, there is my anxious capybara. Okay, here we go. We got our anxious capybara. <laughs> All right, and uh, I thought this one he would be fun to do because I gave him buck teeth, and I did that unintentional because they're rodents. They have big buck teeth, but on top of that, it'd be fun to let those teeth kind of influence the voice. Something to kind of play around with that, like the teeth would get in the way, and that'll give him a unique sounding 
uh, sounding voice to go with. Okay, going through the Amazon, doing my thing. What's that? What's that? No! It's an unidentified flying object insect thing! I don't like it! Would you just go away? Yeah, he basically just scream and be scared the whole time. So yeah, that's that's his voice. <laughs> that's that's what I came up with for him. And now the last two I came up with just because I thought it would be fun. Um, we've got I want to do a pompous T Rex, you know, very upper an upper crust T Rex. We'll see how that goes. So I really wanted to do this T-Rex in a very exaggerated, cartoony style, strictly because I feel like T-Rexes just lend themselves to an exaggerated style because their bodies are so exaggerated already. I mean, they got a huge head, big mouth, itty bitty little arms, huge bodies. It's just, it, it, they just lend themselves to this so well. So I had a lot of fun doing that. I also debated for a while whether to give him a full on tuxedo suit thing or just stick with a couple accents here. And I ended up going with accents just because I felt like it up the comedy a little bit to just have a normal T-Rex. Like if you saw him without the monocle, top hat and cane, and he wasn't making that snooty face, you might actually be scared of him if you saw him out in the jungle or something. But then you see the top hat, cane and monocle and all of a sudden, He's so much less threatening and a lot more fun <laughs> to look at. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the way he turned out. I really like the color juxtaposition. It's very bright and it's very in your face. And I love that. And I really think that translated well here. So, yes, here is my snooty Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right, now we have our pompous T-Rex. So, <clears throat> how did his voice go? Obviously, he's got to be British for no other reason than I think he should have that posh British accent but then have a lot of gravel underneath because he is still a dinosaur and we need to, he's still a dinosaur. <laughs> Little Jurassic Park in there. Um, yeah, so we give him some gravel in there. Oh yes, I do believe that I find it appropriate to eat you now. Do I have your permission to be able to eat you now? Because I think you'd go quite well with a lovely garnish if we uh, put a little uh, rosemary on there. Yes, I think you would make a delicious snack. <laughs> Oh, lovely. You do allow me to dine upon you. Gracious, that's lovely. <laughs> Rawr. <laughs> okay, I wanted to be a character and I just want to walk up to a T-Rex. Oh, hello. Rawr. <laughs> okay. All right, lastly, I want to do a little more of a Disney-esque character, someone who's a little more grounded and a little more natural. So I have the idea, let's make let's make an elderly elephant. Y'all know I gotta do a video like this and we gotta put an elephant in somewhere because elephants are awesome. So yeah, let's do that. So this was probably my most ambitious of all the animals on this video. I spent about an hour and a half on this guy because I wanted him to feel grounded and real, but within a cartoony world. So I really wanted to get the shading right. I really wanted to get uh, the wrinkles right. I wanted to get his eye placement right. I didn't want it to feel like inauthentic. I wanted it to feel really authentic for its world and based in a sort of reality. If animals were bipedal and everything, this is how they would really look most likely uh, with some cartoony flair in order to, you know, get some emotion out. And I really was trying to harp on that and get that just right. So that took a while. And as you saw, I was trying to figure out <laughs> what direction his trunk should go, but I really want to get the shading right. I wanted him to just feel grounded in real and uh, still he still feels pretty cartoony, but overall I was really happy with the way he turned out. He ended up almost feeling like something out of Zootopia. I didn't mean for that to happen, but hey, you know, you, you watch it enough times you end up putting some influences in it. So yeah, here is my elderly elephant. So there elephant. is my elderly elephant. I'm thinking for him, like I said, I wanted to make him more grounded. So my go-to old man voice is like they're almost dead, like, <laughs> yeah, so we won't do that. We'll do something that's a little more grounded, a little more realistic. So, and I, I want his voice to be deep because he's an elephant, but one that's warm, one that's warm and inviting. Hello there, grandson. Oh, it's so lovely to see you. Oh, have I ever told you about the time when I was just a wee little elephant calf that everything used to be a lot cheaper? <laughs> Oh yes, now you have to pay five dollars a gallon to go anywhere on the tank of gas. When I was young, it was ten cents a gallon! Why is it still ten cents a gallon? <laughs> he ended up going Gandalf there near the end. Yeah, that's kind of the problem I guess sometimes, is I accidentally throw in some other characters, but... Yes, 
I thought it would be nice to throw a little Sean Connery on there. So basically, this is kind of a mixture of Ian McKellen and Sean Connery, but I think it gets a warm, a warm presence, like a grandfather, which is basically what he is. A grandfather elephant. <laughs> All right, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you guys want to see this again, let me know in the comments. Did you like it? Did you not? Let me know. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye!